Okay. All right. We're here with Kevin Cahoon, who is in town in Houston, Texas, to direct Annie. And I want to ask you uh, three questions. Okay. Question number one is, would you please say a word about your previous history with Bay Area Houston Ballet Theater? Sure. I'm originally from Houston, Texas. Uh, I started as an actor in Houston. My first TV commercial was for the trademark flea market here in Houston. And um, I went on to study at, I went to the Performing Arts High School in Houston, HSPVA, and Humphrey School of Musical Theater at Tuts. And uh, I'd been at Tuts about a year, and then Lynette Gregg, who is the founding artistic director of Bay Area Houston Ballet and Theater, asked me to join the production of The Nutcracker as the Prince. I had never done a ballet, didn't know anything about ballet. Um, and that's when I started taking classes at Bay Area Houston Ballet, and I did The Nutcracker two consecutive years for them. And that has led to a lifelong artistic relationship with them. I have come back and directed uh, numerous productions for them. And I will do Annie, uh, which we begin on Sunday, and that will, I'll stage the show, and um, that will go into production April 11th. And that segues into the second question. Sure. And that is, let's talk about um, how are you approaching uh, Annie as, as the director of that? Um, well, I think it's such an optimistic piece of theater. All of the song titles, Charles Strauss as a writer is very optimistic. Um, the songs, The Sun Will Come Out Tomorrow, Maybe, um, it has a sense, it's a very American piece of theater in that it is so optimistic. And I also think it's such an interesting story because none of the characters are connected uh, to each other by blood. It really is about non-traditional families. You have a bunch of orphans who are in this orphanage. They're their own family unit. Daddy Warbucks, Grace, his secretary, and Annie become a family unit at the end of the show. The people in Hooverville takes place in the Depression. The people who are living under the bridge because they have nowhere else to go, they become a family. So I really think it speaks to the American experience in that we are all immigrants, we really are all here not connected. There are some, you know, Native American people, but the majority have come from other places. We all live together to create a community. So that's, that's sort of my thought on it. <laughs> and in, in, in what aspect do you how does that affect the staging or the action or how you're going to, 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 to arrange the production from a directing standpoint? Well, it takes place in New York City. So an idea that we are going to go forth with is that and there's a big number called NYC where Daddy Warbucks takes Annie out to New York City outside of the orphanage. Look at what this city has to offer. So our plan is to go through all the different neighborhoods of New York City. We're going to go through Chinatown. We're going to go through Harlem. Hasidic Jewish community, and then by the end of the number, everyone is going to be there together, um, showing Annie that this is what New York City, and really America, is at its greatest. And then at the end of the show, for the final, if the sun will come out tomorrow, we'll fly the mansion out, and we'll see all of these people from all the different walks of life and all the different neighborhoods all singing um, the sun will come out tomorrow with Annie. And I think it's timely, too, you know, with the we have such a tricky economic situation right now that I think it speaks to speaks to people that we can survive and we can we can get through it. It it speaks of optimism, and that's I think that's the main word we're going for with the production. Gosh, that sounds exciting. Yeah, <laughs> I hope so. Now, also, you're in this brand new movie, Mars Needs Mom. Yes, I which am. We're, we're having a special screening of tonight that we're, we're going to, and I That's believe right. that it opens tomorrow. That's right, it opens nationwide tomorrow. Nationally. So, um, could you please tell us uh, an interesting uh, story about what that was like to make? Sure, absolutely. Well, it is shot, at Disney and Robert Zemeckis came together to produce this film, and it's shot in motion capture, which if you don't know what that is, it's how they did Avatar. So you wear the scuba suits with the balls on it and the dots on your face. You're surrounded by 124 cameras and they capture what you are doing on the soundstage. Not a lot of scenery, not a lot of props. And once they capture the performance, they take it back and the animators create over what they have captured. I had never done anything like this. A lot of my peers have not. Like it's a new it, technology. It is. 
And so it was very exciting. Um, you wear a helmet with four cameras on the helmet. Um, and it felt a lot like theater because you don't have to worry about hitting a mark for focus or for lighting. You're free to create. So if you have an impulse in a scene, go with that impulse and they will capture it. So much in the film that they have captured, I, I didn't even, I, it was, I didn't even think that they would, that would make it into the film. It was just little detail side things that I was doing while other scenes were going on. Um, to be a part of a Disney film like this is a dream come true. To be a character, a Disney character, is just beyond my wildest expectation. Um, I feel, I, I just am so proud and I pinch myself and there are billboards with the character in the bottom right corner and there's a Facebook page and I thought, wow, this is really cool, this is incredible. Um, and it's a giant movie, it's a big movie, I had no idea, we had the premiere in LA last week and my mom came, my aunt and uncle, and we were driving in the car and they signed saying the street's blocked off, Hollywood's Boulevard is blocked off for a special event. And I was thinking, is this from the premiere of the movie? And it was. And I said to them, this is a much bigger deal than I ever imagined. Um, so it's just a huge honor, truly. That is really exciting. It is. Boy, are you having a good year or what? I, I, I just feel so lucky. You know, as an actor, there are years that are up and there are years that are up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's the way it goes. That's show business, and that's the life you sign up for. But so, right now, it's going pretty good. It's going pretty good. I mean, we shot this a year and a half, almost two years ago. So, as I was watching the film, oh, yes, that's right. That does happen in the movie, because it was so long ago. Um, and I love my character. He's sweet and misunderstood and, you know, not valued. But towards the end... You know, something happens here. Oh, Wingnut, he had it after all. He was, he had his head on straight, so. Well, that's exciting, and I look forward to seeing it, and uh, it was a pleasure to meet you. And thank, thank you. Th nice th to thank you very too. much for, for talking to us. I appreciate it. Okay. Thanks.